I think, uh, I think Harry Oppenheimer got it wrong when he referred to Paul as a good manager. <laughs> I think Paul's a great leader, and that's actually what it's going to take to get us through this. <laughs> Colleagues, partners, esteemed guests, it really is a privilege for me to be standing here again uh, and speaking with you. Your last year's uh, Business Excellence Seminar in London, which happened to be my first, uh, I sat uh, at the end of it thinking, God, how do you repeat this? Well, here we go, and it's at Fachelichen. I think that is fantastic. And I'm sure that you'll agree that Fachelichen embodies so many of the qualities, as I said last night, of natural diamonds. Durability, ageless grace, and beauty, and an ability, more importantly, given what we've heard this morning, to weather the storms that invariably form part of everyday life. And that's so important for us to remember as we go through this part of the cycle. So I've been the chairman of this beautiful company now for almost a year, or just over a year, and what a year it has been. Certainly that wasn't on the list of things to expect when I, uh, when I took over. It seems very hard to believe, but just a few months ago that China abolished its COVID restrictions. And from a macroeconomic perspective, inflation reared its head, and in response, many central banks moved, to near zero, moved their near zero interest rates to what are currently about the highest set of interest rates in recent memory. So from a geopolitical perspective, we're enduring now increased regional volatility, as Bruce said, increasing geopolarization, more fragmented supply chains, and energy and food security challenges all over the world. And within De Beers, we haven't been immune. We've also seen some major changes in our leadership team, but I'm thrilled to have been able to convince Al with Bruce that this was the job for him. And I'm thrilled with how Al is continuing to build on the incredible leadership that has been in the De Beers team for many, many years. You will no doubt get to, Al know, get to know Al a little bit better for those of you who don't know him over the next day or so. But I'd like to take a moment again, Bruce, to thank you for your outstanding leadership, your tireless dedication to this, uh, to this company and to this industry. You've seen it before, we're living it now, and we'll see it again, and that's important because it means we're going to come through this. His ongoing ambassadorial role and involvement in De Beers and him being with us today, I think is absolutely testimony uh, to his passion for the industry and for this company. Now, during all of my time in Anglo-American, and that's knocking on the door of 35 years now, I've been completely fascinated by De Beers. I have a huge admiration for its proven ability to shape up the diamond industry for the good of all of its stakeholders. And I think that my first year as the chairman of De Beers has completely entrenched that view. Now, before I dive into the overarching theme of this, uh, of this speech, let me assure you, we believe in the supply-demand fundamentals of natural diamonds and the depth of the consumer desire for them. Within the diamond sector, we know we believe and we see De Beers as by far and away the most attractive business with the best assets and the most iconic brand in the world. It has the depth of insight to lead this sector, the most advanced technology, the most favorable position across the whole of the value chain. So if anybody's getting out of this turn of the cycle, it is going to be De Beers. I'm genuinely proud of the leadership in De Beers, their leadership in sustainability, the impact on communities, 
It's care for the environment and it's ongoing work to create a fully inclusive and diverse workplace. My sincere hope is that the diamond industry as a whole is going to embrace sustainability in all of its forms. It needs to. The simple reality is that we just don't have a choice if we are going to bequeath a healthy and a vibrant planet to our children and our children's children. So if you indulge me just for one more moment, I'd like to share some thoughts on the topic of using the present to build our future. I have absolutely no doubt that all of us in this room have had our fair share of uncertainty. The VUCA world, as Paul calls it, and we were discussing it last night. And I'd like to absolutely acknowledge your collective leadership, your strength, your persistence, your courage in guiding the diamond sector through what has been a terribly unsettling period for all of us. But allow me to make the following point too. The world in which we live today is always going to be filled with uncertainty and volatility and challenge. It doesn't feel to me this goes away anytime soon. It is our job as leaders to navigate our way through this uncertainty. Carl Jung, the famous Swiss psychiatrist, famously said, and I passionately believe in this, I am not what happened to me, I am what I choose to become. I am not what happened to me, I am what I choose to become. I believe the statement applies not just to people, but it applies to iconic companies such as De Beers and Anglo-American. What we become is a choice. We are all faced with great opportunities, often brilliantly disguised as unsolvable problems. It feels maybe we have a few unsolvable problems, but these are actually real opportunities. The one thing I wholly, wholeheartedly echo from what Bruce said this morning is that we will come through the present uh, and we will emerge stronger and better positioned for the future. We have to apply our minds collectively to how we're going to do this. We have to commit collectively to getting it done and then we just need to get it done. You know, one of my first priorities after taking the helm at Anglo-American was to address our effectiveness uh, as an organization in terms of getting work done. I really wanted to build this effective organization that fundamentally focused on high performance, delivery of our strategy in a key, sustainable and affordable manner. And my vision for this business was to have certain characteristics, highly performance driven, fast moving and agile, clearly accountable, understanding who made what decisions where, and really clearly priority driven. So can't be all things to all people at the same time. And in simple terms, I just wanted to be sure that we were clear on what we were doing at all times. In effect, we leveraged our present reality and we set ourselves up for future success without compromising on safety, on sustainability, and on technical innovation. The exercise has gone through streamlining work and, and being very deliberate about how we do that work and be absolutely clear on our understanding of what the business outcomes of this work are going to be from the corp and moving that, uh, that accountability for those outcomes from the corporate center closer to the businesses and closer to the operations themselves. It's been a, a pretty uh, topsy-turvy process, I have to tell you, but quite exhilarating in getting it done in so far as the empowerment that I see in the businesses is very clear indicator to me that we are going to come through this cycle much stronger than we've ever been before. For De Beers, what does this mean? It means that I could get on with executing plans, nourishing demands for diamonds, optimizing output from our existing operations, exploring for new sources of diamonds, partnering within our value chain to, to, uh, uh, you know, to address all these challenges that we have in the industry today, such as provenance, as we heard spoken about a couple of times this morning, and doing all of this in a sustainable manner, as I said, in alignment with our consumers' expectations. Now, De Beers was founded back in 1888, 
just after which Paul joined, uh, and more than a quarter of a century earlier than, uh, than Anglo-American. And from the outset, De Beers has had a pioneering thinking and innovation coursing through their veins, propelling this industry to new peaks and weathering more than a century of market fluctuations and world events. This is not our first time. It's not our first rodeo. Even the Nanga American, which was founded a good few years later, 19, uh, 1917, just like De Beers, it is also a long-term business. It also has a long-term focus. And you heard Paul mention that in his talk just a moment ago. We think of opportunities through multiple business cycles, and we can't afford to just focus on the here and the now. Therefore, we look at the fundamentals of the diamond industry, and we have to look through the fundamentals of the current state of play. We like the fact that peak diamond production, production has passed. We saw that on one of the slides this morning. And so diamonds are becoming rarer. Also the fact that long-term demand potential is healthy. With 100 million new middle-class Indian and Chinese households expected in the next decade. That's a lot of people that are going to want to show that they value their lives in a different way. And diamonds is one of the answers to that. We also know that underlying consumer desirability for the natural diamond remains strong. Add to the new sales agreement uh, that we've just, uh, just drawn up with the government of Botswana. And that secures De Beers an equal share on the world's greatest diamond deposit for the next three decades. That is a differentiator. Add to that De Beers' access to exploration tenements in Angola, its ongoing commitment to the natural diamond market, and its ownership of Tracer as a means of in ensuring visibility of diamond provenance. And as you know, this is going to be ever more important to consumers who rightly want to know and understand the origins of what it is that they're buying. Let me digress again just for a short moment and share a few reflections on this new sales agreement that we have uh, with the government of Botswana. I am really pleased with this outcome for avoidance of doubt. It was a very, very long journey, and there were many weeks, many days, that Al and I and the team sp spent together, and I actually spent probably two or three times a day on the telephone to Al as we were going through this. I personally spent time uh, in Botswana with the president of Botswana during this process. I think you probably now have a good sense of what, what, uh, what the economics of the deal look like. But there are a couple of aspects of this deal that I think are truly groundbreaking and important for us, important to Anglo-American, important to the government of Botswana, important to De Beers, and important to the industry. And I think what excite me, excites me most about this is this Diamonds for Development Fund that was created with an initial contribution from De Beers. But thereafter, continuing contributions from Debswana. Now, the purpose of this fund is to ensure the diversification of Botswana's economy and to prepare the country for several decades from now when known diamond resources are likely to have dwindled. And I want to be sure that we understand that it's only known diamond resources. And that therefore, the sector is going to be much smaller in the country's GDP. And I think it's visionary that the diamond value today is going to be the basis of the economy of Botswana in the future, not just the economy of today. The alignment of interests is now higher than I believe that it has ever been in our history before. Because the better this fund does, it means the better De Beers is doing. And that's an alignment that is absolutely crystal clear. So for Botswana to achieve what it desires from its natural, uh, its natural resources and create a country that is economically viable, 
hugely sustainable, then it's going to need the beers to do extremely well. I think that says something about genuinely caring and creating a lasting legacy. In my mind, all of the above represents a solid foundation now, which to build from. And this is going to be an exciting future for De Beers and for Diamonds and for Anglo-American, as well as, I hope, for all of you, our site holders. I believe we do have every reason to be optimistic, despite what it says on the charts. And by the way, maybe those charts were a bit more optimistic than it feels like. I certainly turned to Alan and Paul while Bruce was up there saying, it feels harder than that right now, doesn't it? And they both agreed, it does. But there's only one way to build a future, and that is together now, more important than we've ever seen it before. There's a very famous African proverb, which I think is, is true today. It espouses the value of togetherness. It says, if you want to travel fast, go alone. But if you want to travel far, go together. And that's exactly what we need to do. Just a few observations on reputation. It is so important as we build our future together. We can see that today. I think we anticipated it many, many years ago. 2016, we heard just now. I don't have to remind you all that reputation matters so much. So of course it is the emotional value that is the most important thing associated with, uh, with the stone. But it is going to have to come with its own provenance and its own reputation. A reputation not just of value, but of also good, doing good. In fact, the beliefs and opinions held by others about the diamond industry, I think, are going to be those that ultimately determine our long-term success. It often takes years, decades even, to build a reputation. But we know that it can take hours to trash that reputation. And then it takes decades and decades to build it back again. History is littered with examples where through poor management of reputation, titans of industry have experienced spectacular falls from grace. That is not going to be us. A strong reputation starts with a few simple concepts, such as keeping our promises, offering value to our customers, providing a good consumer experience, and protecting our planet and being of service to the community. Our reputation as an industry clearly also needs to extend to our employee value proposition. People work for us because they are proud to be us. It's not a job, it's a life. And I think that is important. In this context, it gives me great pride to see De Beers continue its partnership with the likes of the National Geographic, one of the most reputable sustainability brands globally, and to support the Botswana wetlands. What I really am asking us all to do today is work through our current reality in the knowledge that we own and create a new reality, and that it's not any one of us that can do this on our own. It's all of us that have to do it together. Thank you very much.